No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketing online coach and just a quick video uh, for today. I got a question in the Facebook group, the free Facebook group, the lifestyle design community. If you're not in it, uh, make sure you check it out. There is a free social media marketing beginner course uh, in there as well. So as soon as you request access and you're approved into the group, which you will be, um, you can basically get access to a bunch of resources, including that free beginner course, which is basically uh, the Upwork business model. So how you can leverage freelancer websites to get your first few clients through the door. And uh, this is actually something that I see a lot of gurus still charging good money for, but it's free in my Facebook group. Anyway, the question was how to overcome the question from a client or the objection from a client um, you know, where the client basically requests uh, a portfolio, case study material or references. And the, fir or the first thing I always say when I get this question is try and avoid the question. Okay, now of course it's easier said than done, but I hardly ever get asked that question anymore. I hardly ever get asked, okay, well, can you send me a reference? Can you send me your portfolio? Can you send me any kind of you know, evidence basically that you can run ads uh, for that business and actually get results. And I think it comes down to the confidence in which you, you know, basically take on that call. And of course, for those that are just starting out, it is quite difficult to have, you know, a sales call because you're talking to a complete stranger, you know, which is a CEO of this company and, you know, you're coming in, you know, you've got a bit of that imposter syndrome and, you know, you might stumble over some words, you might have like some outdated sales script that you're using and the business owner sees right through it and says, hold on a minute, you know, can you prove to me that you are what you say you are? And what I've noticed, because again, I'm the same, right? I'm quite an introverted person. I do not like sales calls. But when I hop on sales calls now, I've noticed that because I've done it so many times, because I have got the experience, they can sort of sense that and I don't get hit with those questions anymore. So the first thing you need to do is really focus on the confidence that you portray in the call. So you ask the questions, make sure that you're in charge of that call. Um, basically, you know, start by asking them questions about their business. Make sure that the questions are not from some like outdated sales script, but make sure that they are valid questions that you come across as genuine. And you'll notice that you won't be hit as often with these random questions like, okay, well, uh, can you send me some evidence or can you send me a portfolio or anything like that or even case studies. Now with that said, let's say, you know, it's too little too late, you still get hit with the question and, um, you know, you're basically, you know, put there on the spot, right? That person says to you, okay, well, can you show me a case study or something that you can do? Then what you're best saying on that call is, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, what I'll do is I'll send you a case study along with some portfolio material after the call. But with that said, just a quick disclaimer in all transparency, the way digital marketing is currently going, the way Facebook ads is currently you know, developing with everything that is going on, what worked back then might not necessarily work right now. And what worked for my previous clients won't necessarily work for you, okay? It's just because the market is changing and I do feel like, you know, as a business owner, speaking to another business owner, I should tell you that. So what I would like actually like to propose is for me to get analyst access to your business manager and ad account. I will take a look at what you're currently doing and what you can improve or what I think you can improve. Then on our next call, um, I will basically present to you what I would do if we were to work together. If it sounds like we are a right fit, if you feel confident in my ability to deliver that service, we can move forward from there. If not, no pressure, no strings attached, no hard feelings. We'll just part ways and you'll basically have this newfound information on what you know, actionable steps you can take with your business. And by positioning yourself like that, you'll notice that because you've, you've overcome that objection with confidence, um, the client is more than happy to sort of forget about the case study or the portfolio material. And better yet, you will have you'll have your foot in the door, right? You'll have access to their assets, their business manager ad account. And if they say, well, I don't want to give a stranger access to my ad account or anything like that, just say, listen, I completely understand. And that is why I asked for analyst access because with analyst access, I cannot make any changes. I cannot delete, I cannot add, I can't do anything within the ad account 
all I can do is analyze the data, hence analyst access. And that will obviously you know, put that person at ease. And if, if that person wants you to sign a non-disclosure agreement, then you know that is just the way it is. But like I said, you'll have your foot in the door because you'll have access to their assets. Um, you'll have overcome that objection of you know uh, needing to send a portfolio or anything like that. And like I said, you'll come across as a confident business owner because like you've you've given a valid answer and a valid reason why you'd rather not send a portfolio or anything like that. Now, quick little bonus tip: if they ask, okay, well, can you send me a proposal? Which is another objection that we you know, especially when starting out, you will get quite often. Then you say, yeah, sure, you know, that's completely fine. I can send you a proposal after this call, but. You know, there's nothing that I can say in a proposal that I can't just say to you right now on this call. So why not just discuss everything that you want want to know of our service on this call, and then after the call, I'll send you a breakdown of everything we've discussed. Does that sound fair enough? And again, that is another objection that you've overcame because rather than sending some email with like little bullet points of what you can do, you can get his feedback right away there and then on the call. And usually what you'll notice is if they say, send me a proposal, that's just their way of saying, okay, I haven't got the balls to say no to you on this call. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you send me an email and either ignore that email or say no to you by email. Okay, so really, because of course, as an agency owner, especially when you're starting out, it's quite nervous, it's quite you know, nerve wracking, right? So you're on this call. But if that person says that, that means that he's also nervous because that means that he, like I said, he hasn't got the confidence to strike you down on that call. So that is an easy way to overcome that. And then you've sort of put him in the spot, right? If he's not genuinely interested, then you'll have to try and worm his way out of that because you've said, listen, basically you're saying, listen, we're staying on this call and I'm not gonna send anything unless it's you know written in stone and then after the call, I'll send you it. Okay, so those are like my two little tips regarding like the case study and overcoming the objections. Um, one last tip, if you still struggle to get out of all of this, what you can do is you can create a generic case study of what is going on within the industry. I've read quite a few good articles on this. Um, for example, I actually read an article the other day. If I can still find it, I will link it below. Um, probably not because you know I do a lot of browsing on the internet and chances are it's way down um, in my history. But anyway, um, it was about fitness supplements and how fitness supplements during the pandemic have actually increased in terms of e-commerce so you know online are getting more sales basically than the physical fitness uh, supplement stores um, and the basically the the whole case study was about what is going on in the industry what is you know changing in the industry and why people should switch to online marketing facebook ads and i think it was about google ads as well um, as opposed to having just a physical store and the funny thing is at the end of the the article there was a pitch to say okay if you want to know more book a call but nowhere in that case study did he have previous results i'm saying he i don't even know if it's a he or she or not but the person who wrote the article didn't have any previous results didn't have any case studies of what that person has done for other clients he just he or she again you know just gave information of what is changing in the market and the end of it actually had a call to action to book a call if they want to know more. And I read that article and I was convinced that, you know, just by reading what that person has said, that that person was an expert. But like I said, there was no real hardcore evidence that that person has actually done Facebook ads or Google ads before, um, you know, in that article. So that is another way of sort of getting around it by creating a generic case study on the industry and how it's changing currently. Um, and then have the call to action. Because again, because you're providing that information, you're providing that value, you'll still come across as the, as the authority figure. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this video here because um, I think that was enough for one video. Um, hope this was to the point enough. You know, I do sometimes get some comments on my videos being too long and stuff like that. And to be fair, what I usually think, if you can't sit through a 15 minute video, you know, if you haven't got the patience to do so, then maybe this challenge, challenge channel just isn't for you okay but anyway i'm gonna wrap up this video here thank you so much for watching if you like this video please leave it a thumbs up if you want to know more about social media marketing if you're serious about building your own agency and you want to work together then send me a message on either facebook or instagram or what you can do is you can book a call with the link in the description box down below we hop on a quick little call see if we can help each other out see if you know you are right there for my program and then potentially move forward from there if not no pressure no hard feelings thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video